I had read somewhere that a culture that to be complete has to have music, a visual art, and dance. And if you had all that, then you know, I don't, I don't remember where I read this, but it made sense. Like, ah, this is more complex and more interwoven kind of cultural thing. So at the time, I had thought like, well, this graffiti thing was over here going on by itself. And then this hip hop thing was going on over here by itself. And the break dancing was a thing that would happen, but it really wasn't like, whoa, like, let's go run and see these break dancers. You know, it was just all apart. But at the same time, things were separate. People were doing their own things. And then I had the idea that this was all one thing. There was this definite link, you know, like Henry was instrumental in that. So the whole idea was like, you know, we did this performance where the, I guess I was rapping, he was showing the slides at this performance space and the Rocksteady crew was breakdancing and the press was there. So the press kind of put the spotlight on it, put the magnifying glass down and it just blew, kind of, whoa, this thing is happening. You know, hip hop is a whole lot of things, baby. We can go on and on, but I think it's interesting that, you know, we have a, a clear understanding of how it went down. You know, you look at things like Star Wars that really c captured probably the last hot era of graffiti, like when it was really raging, you know, above ground and below ground, I mean literally and figuratively, things that were going on, people that were still like, had one foot in the art galleries kind of sorta, but was also still hitting trains aggressively. With Henry and Tony, when they made Star Wars, they really weren't thinking 20 years ahead, like, wow, you know, in 20 years, we'll like come back and do a DVD, you know. It was really about being a part of it, what was going on then, helping to put a frame around it so that you could show these people, like, this is important, you know. I mean, doing it at the time, this culture was not really praised in any way, in any shape, form, you know, still. Not that racism is gone, there's still a lot of racism behind people's judgments, you know, fueled by ignorance, you know what I'm saying? And uh, very few, relatively, were seeing the beneficial aspects of what this was, you know, and what this could be, what this meant to a segment of the population that really wasn't getting a lot of love from the city. We're on the Staten Island Ferry. You guys have filmed me on the boat, but... I must admit that I regret not being more involved because it was just so fly um, Star Wars. I was like, damn. But it's still perfect because they're perfect companion pieces, you know, to each other, the wild style and Star Wars. And probably the greatest thing that I remember is when we played as a double bill in the theater up in Midtown where Wild Style had played for quite a while. That night, I just remember as being like so historic because it was one of those things where everybody in graffiti came out. It was like like a graffiti convention, and like everybody from Wildstar came out. So like you really had hip hop in the house. The theater owner at first was so happy because the theater owner was doing such great business, you know, with the movie. Like the movie played did really well in this one theater, but man, like that night. It was just like a thing to do whenever graph people would show up, like everybody had to tag, like everything. And I remember, man, under the sink. Cats had tagged under the sink, money. I was like, I went and looked at the map. I was like, yo, this is hot. Like everything was tagged, you know, like you can just look, you know. The guy came in, he was like, they're animals. Ah, look at this, this is crazy. I was like, well, you know. That basic thing in graffiti of, uh, of, of, of getting up, if you will, or whatever you want to term that, has always underlied everything I've done, everything I do to this day. You know what I'm saying?